Okay. So now we're going to get into writing empirical formulas based on percent composition data, which is really the, the, the bulk of this lesson. Um, so if you look here, we're given a formula that contains both sulfur, and I just broke the smart bar marker, um, and, and, and oxygen, which is oxide. Um, and um, sulfur is 40.05%, and oxygen is 59.95%. So that's the important information um, from the problem. And the first thing you have to do is if you assume you have 100 grams of the compound, and these are the percentages, that means you have 40.05 grams of sulfur and, okay, 59.95 grams of oxygen. So all I did is take those percentages um, and turn them into um, uh, grams, because if you have 100 grams, you multiply by the percentage and you get the grams. Then we're going to divide the moles of each of them so I have step two. We're going to convert each to moles. So the molar mass of sulfur um, is 32.06. Um, and if you do that out, and I suggest you get a calculator out and do the math with me, okay? This comes to 1.2, and you don't have to write out all the decimal places. To be safe, I would write out about five or six decimal places. You do not care about sig figs in this lesson, okay? So do not worry about sig figs. So that's moles of sulfur. And if we do the same thing here, the mass of oxygen is 16. And we get 3.746875. Okay. So that's the moles of oxygen. Okay. Now the next step, okay, is to divide each one by the smallest amount. So if we look at which one's the smaller amount of moles, this is sulfur, um, this is the smallest amount. So we're going to divide each one by the smallest amount. So we're going to divide this one by itself. So I'm just going to put a ditto. And then this one by 1 point, I'll write the whole number out, 2, 4, um, 9, 2, 2. When you do this, this divided by itself is 1. And then when you do this out, this is 2.9999, very, 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 very close to 3. So for our purposes, we could say it's 3. Okay. And then that means our empirical formula, the number with S was 1, so it's S1, which we don't write, O3. Okay, now what I would suggest you doing, and this is up to you if you want to do that, okay, is try the next one, okay, um, and, the, and then I'm going to, like, pause the video, try the next one, which is this one, um, and then come back and see if you're right. That's up to you. Okay. So the next one, um, again, we have another empirical formula. And so we have aluminum, right? And we have 35.96 grams of aluminum. And then we have sulfur. And there are 64.02 grams of sulfur. And then again, remember the next step is to divide them by the molar mass. So the molar mass of aluminum, which I'm getting from the periodic table, is that. And the molar mass of sulfur, again, which we did in the last column, is that. And then when we do the division for sulfur, this is 1.3328 moles of aluminum. And then this is 1.99688 moles of sulfur. Okay. And then remember, the next step is to divide each one by the smallest one. Okay. This one here is the smallest one, so I'm going to divide this by itself. And then this one by the smallest small amount here, so 1.3328. Um, now, when you do that division, okay, and I just did it to make, to make sure you get the division here is 1.4982. Now, some of you may say, okay, well, how do I round that? You don't. This is really, really, really close to 1.5, okay? But now, when you're having an empirical formula or any formula, you can't have a subscript of 1.5. But to clear the 1.5, okay, remember this one's 1, we can multiply both of these by 2 to clear the 1.5. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 1.5 times 2 is 3, okay? So that means our formula is aluminum 2 S3 as our final formula. Now, 
You can have other types of multiply or other answers when you do the division by the smallest molar amount. And there are numbers that if you multiply by, it will clear it and make it a whole number. So if the, when you divide them by the smallest molar amount, if the answer is close to point, like the, so like, for, for example, if you divided it and you got 1.2, you would multiply it by 5 to make it a whole number. Let's say you did that division by the smallest number amount and you got, I don't know, 3.25. You would multiply it by 4, okay, to make it a whole number. Because if you did, you know, if you do, um, calculator, gone awry, if you do 3.25 times 4, you know, that makes it a whole number, okay? If when you divide by the smallest mole amount, you get a decimal that ends in one-third or 0.333, you multiply 3 to make it a whole number, uh, 0.5 to multiply it by 2. Um, 0.667 you multiply by 3, and then 0.75 you multiply by 4 um, to clear the whole number. I mean, you could just play also, and you know, not even really have to memorize this, you could just play and see what makes it a, a whole number. Um, and we'll have more practice with this um, in class um, on Monday a little bit. Okay, so we have, um, oh, this question we're skipping. I forgot. Those two we're skipping. And I, I think your version just goes directly to this one. So I deleted some of the slides that we were going to do at a later time. Actually, hold on. No. I messed up. We're doing two. We're not doing three. All right. So this question is a little bit different from the other ones because they're not giving you a percentage. They're giving you the grams. Okay? But that doesn't matter. You just divide the grams, okay, by the molar mass of the, of the element. So we have... We look, we're having another, we have another um, compound that contains this many grams of carbon and this many grams of hydrogen. So for carbon, 2.003 grams divided by the molar mass, which is that. I'm going to do the same thing for hydrogen, which is 0.4448. And the molar mass is that lovely number. All right, and we, when we do this math out, we get 0.166. 903, and for this, we get 0.441269, okay? Now remember, we have to divide it by the smallest molar amount, which again, this, is, this number is smaller than this. So we're going to divide this one by itself, and this one by that number up there, which is the smallest. And when we do that, we get close to 0.6438. And then this is one. Okay. Now, if we look at that number, if we look at our, if we go back and look at our multipliers, okay, that number is really close to this. Out of all these things, it's really close to this. Okay. So again, it's it's close to two thirds, or oh, I went back another one. Um, it's almost 0.66, and that's the closest one. So we're going to multiply to clear it. We're going to multiply both of them by three. So one times three is three, and if we multiply this by three. Um, you get really, really, really close to 8. If you do that in the calculator, you get really close to 8. So that means our formula is C3H8 as our final formula. All right, so this is our last problem. Um, and then there were, I know there are two more problems. Those problems we're going to do um, in class on Monday because um, they, they can be a little bit more confusing, So uh, and it's just easier to do, to do that in class. So this is a reaction, okay? And it says we're taking some magnesium, and we did this. We did something similar. I'm um, on the quiz, the summer assignment quiz, okay? And then we're um, and that, so this piece of magnesium has a mass of 0.403, and we're reacting it with oxygen from the air, and then you produce a solid oxide, which means a compound with oxygen in it, that has this mass, okay? So the first A says to determine the mass of oxygen collected. Okay, well, if this was the mass of the magnesium ribbon, and then it reacted with oxygen and became 0.667, the reason why it increased in mass is it reacted with oxygen, okay? So to define the amount of oxygen that reacted, or that's now in the compound, we need to subtract those two numbers. And when you do that, let me see, you get 0 0.6, 0 0.264, um, grams of O2. Okay. Now, B, B 
wants us to calculate the empirical formula. Well, we now know the grams of oxygen, so we can divide that by its molar mass. And this should not be a, a little two, by the way, because it's you don't know what it is. It's just one. I know we always write O as diatomic, um, but here we don't know if it's bonded with something else. So it doesn't have to be diatomic when it's bonded with something else. Okay. And now, well, okay, we, to find the formula, we need to know the mass of magnesium that reacted. Well, we have that because that we this we're assuming that this entire the magnesium completely reacted. So we have 4.03 grams of Mg, and we're going to divide that by its molar mass, which is 24.3. Okay. Now if we do this out, and I'm going to write it in a different color so it stands out, um, that mass of oxygen, when we do that, if we do that division, is 0 0.0165. Okay. And again, we don't care, we're trying to get, like, we're rounding here, we don't really care about sig figs. And then when I do this one, uh, it's also about 0 0.0165. So now you say, well, miss, miss, like the, the, the numbers are the same. So which one do I divide by? Well, either one. You divide this by this, and you get one. And this by this, and you get one. So that means the formula is that there's one magnesium. We don't need to write the one. So no one needed there. And then one oxygen. And that's our formula of the oxide um, that we formed. Now, question C um, is one of those um, sort of error questions that I think we're not fond of. So I'm just going to erase this. So if you need to rewrite it, make sure you pause it. Because um, I'm going to go through the logic that you need to follow by writing it down um, for question C. Okay. So it says, if the magnesium that you use had been covered in rust and used in the reaction, would you expect the mass ratio of MgO to increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay. So if the magnesium is always already already covered in rust, which means like it can't react with oxygen because it already has, that means, okay, less O2 would react. So because it's covered in rust, less O2 would react. If that's the case, think there's less O2 reacting with it, okay, um, the mass of the magnesium oxygen compound, okay, would increase less. Wouldn't increase as much, it would be lower. Okay, now you have to think, well, what, when I got this number, which this number, I mean, this number here would be lower. Okay, well, and when I was doing these calculations, what did I do? What did I do with this number? Well, I use this number to get the mass of the oxygen collected. Okay. And I to do that, I subtracted this from this. Well, if this number is lower, okay, that what that means is the mass of the oxygen will be uh, will be lower. And again, I can't put this two here. Oh. Always writing O as diatomic. Go away two. So that means the mass of the O2 collected will be lower. We have to think about, okay, well, what will that do to an MGO ratio of mass? Okay. Well, if we have a fraction, if the bottom number on the fraction is lower, okay, then that makes the overall fraction higher. And again, this number is staying the same. This number is staying 4.03 from the problem here. Okay. But if you make the amount of oxygen lower, like let's say it was two and now it's one, then this whole fraction is going to get bigger. So overall, the answer is that the MGO ratio will increase. Now, if you remember when I was saying to do these problems, um, that you should write that first. So if I had room on, on top, I would write that first and then go through um, that, um, that explanation. All right, so I'm going to email you the problems that you got to do for homework. Have a good weekend.